What do you think the way that he's played at left tackle? Obviously, he's going to get a run here, and he did it earlier this season. We didn't know much about him. The guy that's played the position, obviously, been on the field with him. What do you think the way he's handled that? <clears throat> well, everyone in this building, on this team, all the staff, everybody knew what Yash was and is capable of. To be honest with you, he is probably the most explosive person on this team, pound for pound. How he moves and how he's able to move is honestly second to none. He is just a, he's a specimen. Um, so we all knew what he was capable of. It's just a lot of situations, um, as time has showed me in this league, uh, you just got to kind of wait for your opportunity. And those opportunities come through injury, um, through negative play. Um, they come in different packages in an offense or a defense, you know, like there's a thousand different ways that you can get on the field. And, you know, Yash is uh, finally able to get out there on the field this year and show what he can do. What do you think the difference was for him? What do I think the difference was? Year, yeah, third year here for him. What, what clicked, do you think? I don't necessarily know that anything has clicked for him. It's just, you know, the NFL uh, treats everyone different, especially from, a, you, know, you know, an aspect where you come into this league, whether you're drafted, undrafted, you're a free agent, you're a tryout guy. We got a, a mixed uh, number of every one of those guys, not only on the offensive line, but on this team. So, you know, like I said, I think it's more so an opportunity thing. Um, there's not a, a doubt in my mind that doesn't think that if Yash was on the field earlier than he was this year, that he wouldn't have done the same thing. Dylan, he seems like a guy that uh, everyone seems to embrace personality-wise. Is he an easy guy to root for in Rockland? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yash is, uh, again, not only one of the most explosive, he's probably arguably the nicest guy not only on this team but in this building. He's very uh, down to earth and he carries himself like uh, a true professional, like uh, any member of our society should, in my opinion. Have you appreciated the fact that he's been able to hold it down so that you can stay at right with all the moving parts that's been going on at left? I mean, is that something that, that's, that's been helpful for you just to be able to focus on that and let him do that? I, I wouldn't say I'm appreciative of that. I'm appreciative of the way that he's playing the game and carries himself as a man. I'm appreciative of everyone on this team, offense, defense, staff, trainers, equipment members, you know, of carrying themselves and conducting themselves in the right way. But how we go out and play on the field, I'm proud of everyone. So it's not like I'm surprised that Yash has done a great job so I don't have to move and switch positions. I've done it before. I've done it in the past. and I'm probably going to have to do it again at another point in my career. And it is what it is. That's just you know, adversity at any given moment in time. So I'm proud of him for the way that he has performed, but it's not because of the reason that I get to stay at a certain position. What has that done for you in your game, though, that you have been able to this season? I know it was pretty crazy last year, right? How, how, how much calmer and, and not easier, but just just how much better has it been for you to be able to just focus on one spot? You know, it, uh, it, I think it's helped me help other guys prepare. When you have to switch positions and things get switched up at the last second, um, it's a little bit harder preparation-wise based on the defensive scheme and or the team that you're going up against. It's not the easiest thing in the world, like I've said before, you know, but it, it's just allowed me personally, I think, to help other guys in situations, help the younger guys that are playing this year at other positions, not only the offensive line, but it, it allows me to help those guys. and. Again, I don't doubt that I'm not going to have to move positions again at some point in my career. You know, obviously, I think we all can hope to remain in our comfort zone, you know, but at the end of the day, uncomfortability makes you grow as a person and it makes you grow as a player in this league as well. What do you call, what do you recall from your time with Vaughn? Uh, he's a great dude. I enjoyed being Vaughn's teammate and I owe a lot of my success as an offensive lineman to practicing against him every single day for you know two and a half, three years. Um, every, it's ancient history, I realize, but does any of that help 
does any of what help? All those reps that you took on practice, does, does that help or is that just so long ago now? Uh, no, I mean, you, you always remember things. I shouldn't say you always do. I personally do despite uh, a different team, a, a different defense or whoever I'm going up against on a regular basis at practice or in the game. You always remember those plays and certain individuals that you play against because a lot of guys have certain things that they'll go back to, you know? So it's definitely helped me pro progress and to move forward and to grow as a player. So I definitely remember a lot of those reps in practices against him. And, you know, it's not that I'm trying to remember those for the game on Sunday, but it's just the mere fact that those have helped me progress over the years as a player. You know, once you kind of get certain reps and certain, um, different things in your memory bank as a player, you're able to lean on those things and remember as you go against other people in this league. Hey, Billy, um, Matt LaFleur said that when he heard that Aaron Donald was a little bit more motivated this matchup, he joked that it makes him want to cry. What's your reaction to going up against a player of his status? Aaron Donald, it's obvious. He's a great player, one of the greatest of all time. There's a, I mean, there's a lot you can say about a dude to the uh, to the caliber of Aaron Donald. Um, to be honest with you, like I tell you guys every week when I'm in here, we prepare the same exact way. We're not going to prepare differently, um, you know, because that's something that's going to be out of our comfort zone. And when you go against a great team, a great defense, a great player, one of the things that you have to lean on is your comfortability in your preparation throughout the course of that week. If you add stressors and you're always talking about certain things, you're going to be heightened stress level wise during practice and you might get into the game and that might be something that throws you off if you're not used to that. You know, so like I said, he's a great player. We're going to prepare the same way. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he would not be hyped up for this game because they played here last year and it was the last game of their season. So not only him, but everyone else on that team, on that staff, you expect to be heightened for a game like this, no differently than us. Hey, Billy, um, speaking of being in your comfort zone and your preparation being the same, your preparation isn't the same with your quarterback uh, having to be on a headset and not being able to run the plays. What kind of challenge has that been for you guys these couple of weeks? Um, I mean, it's no situation that I haven't been in before, to be honest with you. Some of these younger guys, uh, you come into the NFL and you don't truly realize the type of adversity that you're going to be up against at any given point in time. And Aaron Rodgers is a GOAT. He's a great player. You want him on the field at all times if he can be. But the reality of the situation is, is that things happen and certain people are not always able to be out there. So that's when you lean on other people in the locker room and you try to carry those same things. And this goes into preparation. You try to carry over that preparation just like 12 is out there. Might be a different guy in the huddle, but that's more so on us, and you have to lean on us to keep that preparation and to keep the standard and the level of play the same. So, are, are you one of those guys that has to take you and Mercedes and Devontae? Is that, are you guys kind of those guys that are taking that role on, or, or what? I mean, to be honest with you, I don't think anyone has taken that role on as, you know, in a giant, uh, giant way. I don't think any of us have changed the way that we are going into games preparing whether 12 is out there or not because at any given moment of time when he is in there, all those same guys, Mercedes, Tay, the leaders on this team are still doing the same thing. You know, so whether 12 is in there or not, there's always going to be leaders on that field. This isn't um, necessarily Ram specific, but more big picture speaking. Oftentimes the credit for a game, winning or losing, is goes to skilled players or quarterback, which are in the trenches. Every single week, from your vantage point, how much of games won or lost? How much? All of them. I mean, if you're calling an ace and ace a spade a spade, that's what I think. That's my opinion. The games are won up front. It doesn't matter what defense you're playing. It doesn't matter what offense you're playing. It doesn't matter what team, special teams. None of that matters. At the end of the day, if you can't block up front, you ain't gonna get the ball off. That's my opinion. It makes it a lot easier when you got a guy like Aaron Rodgers, when you got a guy like Devontae Adams, Mercedes Lewis, Aaron Jones. 
You know what I'm saying? Those things make your job easier. But at the end of the day, if you cannot block, you cannot do those things.